Hey everyone, Mike here. In this video, we're gonna go over layer two bridging, and I'm doing this specifically because I've been asked about it a few times, but more, most recently from Andrew who said, would it be possible to do a VLAN to overlay layer two bridging video for NSXT 3.0? It's a very useful feature for migrations. Well, Andrew, ask and you shall receive. So let's get to it. In this video, we're gonna talk about the design that I have going on in my lab and how we will be setting it up. And in the next video, we'll actually implement it pretty much from scratch for the most part. And I'll explain why I'm kind of hesitant to say it's totally from scratch. There is some pre-work, you have to set up edges and that sort of thing. But the good news is I already have videos that show you guys how to do that, so check them out. That said, too much talking, let's get going. All right, so I wanna give you a little tour of my home lab. So if we kind of start on the bottom here, we have web01a and we've got an IP address on it. It has 10.25.24.100. This is a virtual machine that's sitting on a vSphere host. And this is what I would consider kind of the legacy environment. And I guess I kind of want to stop there and talk about layer two bridging as a whole. The reason people implement layer two bridging is usually because they want to implement NSXT, but they're kind of concerned about, you know, does NSXT own the network? Does my physical network own the network? Where's the default gateway? A lot of times you're not going to just flip a switch and be on NSXT. You're going to have this time where you coexist with your original VLANs, but you also want to do overlay networking with NSXT, which has its own benefits as well. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to have Web01 be that kind of legacy environment. So this is on a VLAN port group. This is just a standard switch, actually. In my case, it could be a distributed switch. It could even be a physical server. It doesn't matter. This would be considered kind of the legacy environment or the brownfield environment. Moving over here, we have test VM, which has an IP address. It's actually, if you look at it, it's on the same network, 10.25.24, except its IP ends in .15. Now this is going to be connected to an overlay segment in NSXT, which we will configure. This is going to be kind of the new environment, and our goal here is to allow these two to talk to each other. If we can ping between the two, we're essentially translating then from VLAN 24 over here over to the overlay segment here in NSXT. Now, you also see these edge nodes over on the right side, and as I mentioned earlier, you'd have to set up edge nodes. The reason is that these are responsible for doing that translation from VLAN to overlay segments. So basically what would happen is VLAN 24 will be basically be transmitted, the frames will be transmitted over here, it'll come down this trunk to my edge nodes. I'll have them be active standby for the bridging process. They will be doing other things as well, but the one we care about is the bridging process. And basically, the node that takes that traffic coming in, the active node, will then translate that to whatever VNI, or virtual network identifier, for the overlay network we need to talk to, basically. And then it'll send it out as overlay traffic to this VM, basically. So basically, it's just translating between VLAN and overlay. Now, that said, the edge deployment that I have here is completely standard, at least standard to me. So if you've watched any of my other videos on edge deployments, if you follow those, you'll be just fine because that's how these are configured currently. And just to summarize, I'm basically trunking all VLANs to the host where these edges sit. I did need to make one minor change to the port group that these connect to, and that is you need to enable promiscuous mode and forge transmits on the port group that these connect to. Now we'll go over that again in the implementation piece, but just in case I forget, don't forget to do that. So you will need that on this, wherever, the, wherever those VMs sit, wherever these edges sit, you need to make sure you enable those on those trunk port groups or whatever port groups are on. That said, if you're a little confused right now, let me just sum it up. Everything in this box right here is NSX. So we have our edge nodes, those are NSX. We have our overlay segment that is NSX. But this Web01 VM has nothing to do with NSX. It has no awareness of NSX. It's not connected to an NSX port group. The host it's on doesn't have to be prepped for NSX, nothing at all. And these two right here will be able to talk just fine. And just to drive that point home further, as I mentioned before, we could have a physical server here and it could be just connected to a switch and we have VLAN 24 assigned to that port. That's fine too. That physical server could still think it's on the same broadcast domain as this test VM as well. And I hadn't really talked about it much, but basically this gray box in the middle is just my Juniper switch. It's just a layer three switch. And this is where the default gateway lives for this network we're talking about down here. So in my environment, what I'm going to do is have it continue to use that default gateway. So for VLAN 24, it will work as it always did. It will leave the host on VLAN 24. It'll hit the switch and there its default gateway is. 
Now in my test VM's case, it will work a little differently because basically this traffic will hit the edge node where it will be translated basically to VLAN 24 and then sent out on the wire where it'll hit, a, hit its default gateway essentially. So this is a great way to kind of ease into NSX so you're not changing any routing at all in any form really, but we are getting the benefit of now we can start to move into overlay networking. Now I do want to say if we wanted to have the default gateway be owned by NSXT, we can do that. We would just connect this overlay segment to some kind of router. I'm not going to get into that in this video. That just kind of muddies the water. But just be aware that we have some flexibility in how we set it up. So the last thing I want to mention is that when we do layer 2 bridging in NSXT, it's a one-to-one -one mapping from VLAN to overlay segment. So we can't do like four VLANs over here to one overlay segment. That's not possible. Now that said, that's all I got for you in this video. In the next video, I will go over the full implementation completely from scratch or mostly from scratch, but I will give you all the tools. You've got all my other videos, so you can set it up. No big deal. It's really simple, so I'm looking forward to it. I hope everyone's doing well. I'll see you there.